All right, what's good, y'all? It has been a minute since we did a K Reviews episode. Um, and man, is there a lot to talk about because this rap beef has popped off to a level that um, I don't even think I don't think anybody expected. Certainly, I didn't expect it to to get to where it is currently. Um, but man, there's there's a lot to talk about. I I kind of put off doing this video for a little bit because so much was happening. Um, you know, when I was going to do a video on euphoria, uh, that week got kind of busy, didn't get a chance to do it by the time 616 in LA dropped. And when 616 in LA dropped, I just kind of had the feeling like, I feel like more is going to come really, really fast. And I decided to wait it out. Um, and that decision was right because we ended up getting three new songs in a span of 24 hours, um, after that. So you know, it was it was a good decision to wait it out. I can I can talk about all of it um, in length here now. So um, I guess I'll start start this video off by saying, you know, I usually try to be unbiased. Um, I was certainly trying to be unbiased in the last video we did, which was on Drake's push ups. Um, and I'm, I'm just now realizing I didn't even do a video on Taylor made freestyle and the whole AI situation. So I guess I could talk about that in this video as well. But um, the last video I did was on Drake's pushups and, you know, I try my best to be as unbiased as possible. Um, but it, it, it's tough, man. You know, everybody has their own biases. Everybody has their own opinion. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm coming into this video to give you guys my true and honest opinion, bias or not. Um, I'm going to give you guys what I honestly think. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, my opinion in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. So if you disagree with my opinion, you know, feel free to voice that in whatever way you see fit. Um, but yeah, I'm not here to I'm not here to sugarcoat my true feelings. I'm here to give you guys exactly what I think about this whole situation. So I guess we can start by saying who I, I mean, as of right now, it almost seems like the battle is over from what I'm seeing from, you know, people uh, on Kendrick's camp. Like they're kind of speaking as though it's over. And, um, you know, the heart part six sounded to me like Drake was over it. Um, he did not sound ambitious. He did not sound like. He wanted to keep this going. He even said, you know, I, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. You could drop 100 more. I'll see you later. Um, so from both sides, I'm kind of getting the impression that this thing is, if it's not completely over, it's it's reaching the point where, you know, it, 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 it's about to be over. Um, and I guess at that point, when a rap beef ends, the discussion becomes who won. And in my truthful, honest opinion, I, 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 don't, I don't even really think it's close. I think Kendrick ran away with this um and and you know drake was winning during that period in between like that and euphoria where he had push-ups out and he had taylor made freestyle out and had everybody clowning kendrick for taking a long time even though drake took three weeks kendrick only took two weeks uh drake took three weeks to put out push-ups after the like that verse kendrick took two weeks to put out euphoria after um the push-ups verse so i mean whatever that but everybody was kind of clowning on Kendrick for taking too long. Drake certainly had the lead. And in my opinion, um, you know, when Euphoria came out, I'm taking Euphoria and like that over uh, push-ups and um, Taylor made freestyle easy. Um, and then so I, to me, round one is Euphoria versus push-ups. OK, I guess we'll break it down like that. Euphoria versus push-ups. I'm taking Euphoria. Three beat switches. Kendrick's wordplay was incredible. Kendrick's performance vocal-wise, like delivery-wise, cadence-wise was incredible. I mean, certain lines stick in your head just because of the way that he said them. Um, you know, like the fuck push and pee, you better, uh, I want to see you push a T. Like the way he says that, push a T. The way he says it has it stick in your brain a little bit more. Um, and then the, you know, I'm Wine W Melly. Like just the way he says things, like Kendrick has reached... He's a master of his craft beyond just lyrics and flow at this point. Like, he's mastered vocal delivery and cadence just as a rapper. Kendrick has, has really has really mastered his craft. But I, me personally, man, like like I said, I'm, I'm taking Euphoria over, over push-ups um, any day of the week, if I'm being honest, in every aspect. Um, and Kendrick said early on in Euphoria, like, and... and, and probably in reference to the bodyguards like Whitney line from push-ups, but he said early on, like, you know, you heard Mr. Morale, I already know you're about to try to 
put together some lies on the family front. Um, and, you know, I'm ready for that. I'm, I'm expecting it. I, I'm aware of, of who you are and how you move. Um, he, he said all that from the beginning and, and kind of everything that Kendrick laid out kind of happened exactly how he said it was going to happen. A couple, I guess we could talk about a couple of the lines on Euphoria, what makes Euphoria stick out to me a little bit more than push-ups. Um, there were some good lines on push-ups. There were lines that I thought were clever. Um, there was wordplay that I thought was really good. I thought Drake was rapping really well on push-ups. I thought push-ups was a, was a very, very good response to like that, and I thought it, it gave Drake the lead for a moment. Um, but, I mean, Euphoria... From the his daddy a killer, he wanna be junior, he must have forgot the shit that they done. Dementia must run in his family, but let it get shaky, I'll park his son. Like there's layers to that, man. There's layers. Um I saw some people saying, you know, it refers to Jay Prince and everything, and I guess um Jay Prince's son used to sell cars. Now when Kendrick says I'll park his son, I think he's referring to Drake in this case because he's saying Drake wants to be junior. And then of course, obviously the shaky and Parkinson's wordplay with the let it get shaky, I'll park his son. Um, and then you, the whole dementia thing, which Kendrick kind of pokes at the dementia thing with Drake's dad later on in Meet the Grams as well. But then the whole, the whole section where the very first time I shot me a Drake, the homie had told me to aim it this way. I didn't point down enough today. I'll show you. I learned from those mistakes. That's the type of like double entendres that Kendrick is so good at, man. Like, and, and the imagery of Kendrick learning to shoot a gun, um, and, and how he relates it back to learning to shoot, you know, lyrically Drake himself. Um, again, just another line that I think is just incredibly well-crafted. I just, and again, this is all my opinion, man. Like, this is all my personal opinion, but Drake's, even when he comes with great wordplay, um, you know, great rhyme schemes, great, great uh, entendres and everything like that, it is, you know, very easily recognized. You know what I mean? Like, you listen to a Drake track one or once or twice, you got what what he's trying to say for the most part. Um, you know, with Kendrick, like, I, it takes more than a couple listens to really piece together everything that he's saying. And I think even when it comes to the entendres and the wordplay, Kendrick is just a little bit more creative with it than Drake is. Like, it's just a little bit more unique. Drake kind of fits into this pocket of... It's not like Drake is saying wordplay or entendres that we've heard before necessarily, but it's just, it, it's not incredibly unique. It's not incredibly like only Drake would say that. It, it, like you could see another rapper saying some of the things that Drake said on pushups. I can't see another rapper saying some of the things that Kendrick said on this song. Um, like, especially with the inflections and the way that he says it. Um, I saw a lot of people talking about the Joel Austin line. Um, where Kendrick clearly meant to say Joe Osmond and not Austin. Um, I saw some people saying he did the Austin, you know, mistake on purpose to imply that he doesn't know who he's battling. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily buy into that. I do think it was probably a slip up on Kendrick's part, but it's not a slip up that bothers me too much because we know what he was saying. The wordplay um, still stands with the, he was in a film called AI and my sixth sense telling me to off him like, like, that is still really dope wordplay, you know, and, and and the point of what he was trying to say wasn't lost, um, and everyone knew where he was going and every, like, I, I just, it, it doesn't bother me. I think it was a mistake. I don't think it was intentional, but it doesn't bother me like I've seen it bother other people. But man, just e even the way Kendrick flipped things that Drake said, like when Drake said, you know, what's a prince to a king, he is son. Kendrick flipping that and being like, I got a Benjamin and a Jackson all in my house like I'm Joe, okay? That's a much more clever flip, if you ask me. Like, that's a much more clever flip. And it's an entendre in and of itself. Um, and then you think about how, you know, Drake said, what is this, a 20v1? Again, a, a really clever flip with, nah, it's a 1v20 if I got to smack people that write with you. Um, and he's even ousting some of Drake's potential ghostwriters, like, tell Beam that he better stay right with you. I mean, and Kendrick is extremely calculated through this entire thing. This it, Almost through this whole thing, it feels like Kendrick knows exactly what's going on, and Drake has kind of been left in the dark. Like, Kendrick says the whole, you know, uh, try cease and desist on the Like That record, which is huge, by the way, because there is now proof that Drake did, in fact, try to cease and desist the Like That record. But he says, trying to cease and desist on the like that record. Ho, what? You ain't like that record. Back to back, I like that record. I'm going to get back to that for the record. Very, just very calculated in, in like giving hints. Almost like, This whole time he's almost been telling Drake, this is what I'm going to do. But I'm still, I'm still ahead of you. I'm still, I'm uh, like, it's still, I'm still winning the chess game. 
Um, even though I'm telling you exactly like all the things I'm doing or hinting at all the things I'm going to do. But yeah, for me, man, like it's not even close. Euphoria over pushups. Kendrick takes round one. Round two to me would be Taylor made freestyle and uh, 616 in L.A. Now, I think Taylor made freestyle was actually very creative in its approach, um, but I'm not on board with the whole AI Tupac stuff. I think it was a very creative thing to do. Um, I think it was a super interesting thing to do. But that being said, like, I still don't, I'm, I'm still not on board with it. I still don't, I still don't fuck with it. Um, I think, again, Drake was rapping very well on that song, especially on that third verse. Um, I think had Drake just come back to back with a, with a whole thing, um, of him rapping like he was on that third verse, or he can even rap from the perspective of Pac and Snoop, but just don't use their actual voice. I, I, I think it would have fared a lot better for Drake had he, had he gone that route, but Taylor made freestyle nonetheless, I thought was very creative and um, I don't think it was very effective in pushing Kendrick's buttons, but um, I do think it was a very creative um, and interesting move by Drake. But 616 in LA, um, I got to I gotta give it to 616 in LA. Talking about sonically, um, that Al Green sample is immaculate and the way Kendrick is flowing on it is exceptional. Um, so sound wise, I got to give it to 616 in LA. Lyrics-wise, I got to give it to 616 in LA. He's not even necessarily dissing Drake on this song at all. He's actually, like, warning him and trying to help him out and be like, look, I know more than you think I know. Tread very lightly. Like, like I know more than you think I know. And I know a lot of people talking about the fake mole thing. Um, I don't buy that, like, like at all, bro. Like... And people saying the girl was in the video, in, in the back of the video. One, that's not the girl that people were trying to say was, was Drake's kid that's on that video um, and in, like, on the walls. Like, that's a, that's a completely different girl. And two, that Eternity girl is not the girl that, that they are saying is, is uh, Drake's daughter. At least I haven't seen anybody in Kendrick's camp come out and say, that's the girl. You know what I mean? The internet just kind of ran with that. I, I, I don't buy it any of that fake mole stuff. I think Drake was scrolling Twitter. I think he saw that that somebody said that, oh, what if Drake did this? And then decided, I'm going to run with that narrative to try to get keep people on my side. Um, but yeah, bro, I don't buy that shit because if you planted a fake mole and your strategy worked out, then right after Meet the Grams dropped, you know, you would have been... You know, like, oh, here's the proof that I planted a fake mall. Oh, we got your ass. Oh, you stupid as hell. Blah, blah, blah. He didn't do none of that. Instead, he hopped on Instagram talking about, I don't have a daughter. And then ran to TMZ talking about, I don't have a daughter. Like, why were you on the defense? If you planted a fake mole and your whole plan and, and everything that you, you know, mapped out worked in your favor, why do you look like you're scrambling? Like, that, that, that don't make no sense to me, bro. That fake mole shit is not real. It's not real. Um... And I think anybody who's buying into the fake most stuff, just a little bit of critical thinking, man, and you'll realize like there's not there's not a whole lot of validity to that. Now, whether Drake actually has a daughter or not, I don't know. But I will say that people in, in near Kendrick have been saying like, no, this is a real Drake has a daughter. Her birthday just passed. She just had a birthday party. Um, but we're not going to put out who it is because we don't need a bunch of you internet fucking weirdos harassing this little girl. And I think that's, I think that's a great thing to do. You don't need to pull up a receipt of this little girl to have the whole internet go harass her just to win a rap beef. So I, I, I high respect to them for, for not ousting this little girl. Um, you know, meet the grams is for Drake. You know, we all freaked out and we all like, you know, soak it up and, take it in and everything, but it's not really for us. He's, he's talking to Drake and saying like, like that whole daughter shit is for Drake to think about that whole daughter shit is for Drake to be like, Oh man, like, like a lifelong battle with yourself. Like the, like he is telling, breaking down Drake's character and being like, you need to be a better man. Like you need to be a better person. And so, you know, the daughter shit, I'm, I don't care about that shit being proven real because the only reason to do it would be for a bunch of people who are not relevant at all. And, you know, Drake knows if it's true or not. And if it is true, it's eating at Drake in the way it's supposed to. So, um, I yeah, I, I think it's a good move 
on Kendrick's side to not oust the daughter. Um, I don't think they should do that at all. That little girl does not deserve to be harassed. I mean, you look at what's going on with Whitney right now. Drake fans are harassing the fuck out of Whitney just because Drake said that she was a victim of abuse. And I don't understand what makes people think that, like, if she was abused, what makes you think that going and harassing her on the internet is 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 a good move in response to that? Like, just because you want some facts so that your favorite rapper can win the beef? I just... It's ridiculous to me, man. And the stuff that Drake fans are doing with the photoshopping, you know, bruises on her face, like, like and spreading those fake pictures and the okliar.com website that they made like it's weirdo behavior man it's weird that you guys would go to these lengths just to see somebody who doesn't even know who you are win a rap beat i i i just don't get it man I, i really don't um and i got way off topic here but yeah man 616 in la over taylor made freestyle for me because 616 in la is when it really started to feel like oh kendrick knows exactly what's going on and Drake doesn't. And that, to me, was proven correct that same night when Family Matters dropped and Meet the Grams dropped, what was it, like 20 minutes afterwards? Um, the fact that Kendrick knew what Drake's title was going to be and had a song with a title playing on that same concept, playing on that same category of the, the sitcom thing, the fact that Kendrick knew that he was going to you know say tell lies about his family and everything and ends the whole whole song being like, you lied about this, you lied about this, you lied about the only rapper who could offer you some help. And that line is very interesting to me because, again, a common theme throughout this seems to be that Kendrick wants Drake to better himself. Um, It's very clear that he doesn't like who he is, like, as a person, and he doesn't like the way Drake moves and, and what he stands for. But at the same time, he's still trying to help him out. Like, on 616 in LA, Kendrick didn't have to tell him that he knows what he's about to do. And that he has something prepared for it. He didn't have to do that. But he's trying to help the dude out and be like, keep this rap and we can just have a friendly battle. But if you want to take it there, we can take it there. So 616 in LA is trying to help Drake out. Meet the Grams is trying to help Drake out with the whole, like, you lied. This is a lifelong battle with yourself. You lied about the only rapper who could offer you some help. Um, You know, therapy's a great start, but I suggest some ayahuasca and strip your ego from the bottom. Like, it's very clear that although Kendrick does not like this man, you know, he still wants to see him improve on his sins or see him be a better person than he was previously, um, which is interesting because I don't think I've ever seen a rap beef where that was the case. I don't think I've ever seen a rap beef where one rapper kept trying to help the other one while simultaneously completely dismantling their character and 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 dissing on them. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but... So it's very clear that, you know, Kendrick didn't necessarily want this to get as dirty as it got, but it was pretty much like, look, Drake, if if you're going to take it there, like, I have to do what I have to do. Like, if you're going to make this war instead of just friendly competition, then, you know, I have to I have to fight back. I have to battle. Like, if you're going to turn this into war, I'm not just going to sit back with boxing gloves. No, I'm going to go get my guns and we're going to go to war. So I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't think that the way Drake has gone about this whole thing is very good. I think the whole Dave three Dave free thing is, is nonsense as well. Um, anybody, you know, that I've seen on the internet who is kind of close to the situation has said like not a chance that, that something like that was going on. And even if something like that was going on, like Kendrick and Dave free probably would not still be as close as they are and not working as closely as they are. And if that is true and Kendrick and Dave Free are still working as closely as they are and that something like that never got out to the public and, you know, they've moved past it, like, that shows a lot of maturity to even do that. So I just, I don't even understand how the whole your kid isn't yours is even a diss. Like, a deadbeat father telling somebody who is fathering his kids, even if one of those kids might not be his, like, trying to diss on somebody for that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, how are you going to, as a deadbeat dad, shit on somebody for being a father, even if one of the kids isn't theirs? I just don't get that. Um, And I also think that the whole Kendrick beating Whitney thing doesn't have a lot of validity to it. Um, You know, Whitney's uh, brother came out in support of Kendrick. I think if Kendrick was abusing his sister, 
that probably doesn't happen. Granted, like, you know, I don't know. I'm not close to the situation. But I, if Kendrick was really abusing Whitney, I don't think that her brother would publicly come out in support of the man beating her sister. I just, that does not, that doesn't line up for me. And then the claims that, you know, Kendrick hasn't seen his kids in six months and all this other stuff. I mean, there's there's Instagram picture, uh, Instagram picture that Whitney posted of her and the kids in the penthouse in New York. Um, so I don't know, man. I just, the more and more this goes on, the more and more it seems like, you know, things that Kendrick's, Kendrick is saying have at least some evidence to back them um, or at least have, you know, revealed to be the truth in some way. Um, whereas the stuff that Drake is saying not only doesn't have any evidence to back it, but it, it's just kind of like getting exposed as like you're just trying to push the narrative in your favor. Or you're just trying to use dirt to beat somebody who you can't actually out rap. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I think that's why Drake took it there. I think that's why Drake started telling these lies that he's telling is because he felt like I can't beat this man, you know, when it comes to rapping. So I'm going to have to take it dirty and try to win off of public perception. And it's completely backfiring on him because Kendrick is winning on public perception perception. The hard part six has more likes or has more dislikes than likes currently. So that is completely backfiring on Drake um, in, in the public courtroom. Drake is not winning. Uh, the public is not on his side right now. I want to talk about the accusations as far as the human trafficking stuff goes. So, you know, this is not anything new in the industry, like the human trafficking um, and things like that. That stuff isn't new, man. We've seen the Epstein stuff come out. Um, we've seen the stuff about Diddy. You know, if you go down the rabbit hole on the internet, um, you're going to find a lot of stuff that's really uncomfortable. Um, and if you talk to people in the industry, um, you know, they'll tell you there's there is some weird shit going on. Um, and Kendrick tells you on Meet the Grams. I've been in this industry weird 12 years and there's weird shit going on. And some of these artists are here to police it. And, um, you know, I see a lot of people saying, well, Kendrick has no Kendrick has no evidence for the human trafficking claims. Um, I mean, that 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 stuff going on in the industry is no secret. And Drake is very connected to people who have been rumored to be involved in it. Um, is Drake himself human trafficking? I mean, yeah, we don't have any evidence for that specifically. Um, but being that we know that that is something that goes on um, and not everybody's privy to it, not everybody is knowledgeable about it yet. Um, they will be, but they're not yet. But the fact that we're aware that it's going on, the fact that we know Drake is involved with people who are rumored to be a part of it. And the things that we see Drake say in lyrics, the things that we see Drake say in, you know, interviews and um, just different evidence that we've seen as far as underage girls and stuff goes. And then different people coming out talking about Drake's mansion parties and things like that. I don't think it's too far-fetched that Drake would be part of that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and claim that he 100% is because I don't know him. But um, there's certainly more validity to, to Kendrick pointing that out than there is to Drake saying that Kendrick beats his wife. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of leave it at that. Um and you know this this thing this whole thing got really dark man like like family matters and meet the grams turned it from just a rap beef that we were all enjoying and and just here for the bars and everything to something like oh this is this is dark this this is this went from rap beef to exposé and you know after it went after it got that dark we needed uh, something to light the mood and Kendrick really really came through with not like us, which doubles down on almost everything that he talked about, except the daughter thing, because like I said, we don't need the internet harassing this little girl. I'm pretty sure that is not going to be brought up again for that exact reason. Now, Drake fans are going to tell you it's not going to be brought up again because it was a lie, and Drake fan a plague mole, planted a fake mole, you know, for the lie to trick Kendrick. But like I said, I don't, I don't buy that at all. And I think if you are buying it, like you gotta, 
you got to think a little bit more about why the person who supposedly had everything planned out and planted is not looking like the one who is in control. Like Kendrick very much looks like the one who's been in control this entire time. And Drake has looked like the one who's been on the ropes. So I, I don't think Kendrick not mentioning the daughter on Not Like Us has anything to do with it being a lie. I think it has more to do with the fact that like that's not as important as the other accusations I'm making. And I think Kendrick saw the internet and saw Drake disregard the trafficking stuff in order to tackle the daughter stuff. And so I think that was another big reason why Kendrick doubled down on it on Not Like Us. Um, and let me say, like not the I guess the next round of this beef would be, for the record, so 616 in LA, over Taylor made freestyle, in my opinion. Family Matters and Meet the Grams. I'm taking Meet the Grams. I think Meet the Grams is going to go down as one of the most historic um, diss tracks ever because he just dismantled this man's entire character in a way that we've never really seen in a rap beef before. So And, and, it, and the evidence was proven to me that Kendrick did have a mole in OVO just by the fact that Meet the Grams exists and it dropped when it did. Um, but nonetheless, I'm taking Meet the Grams over Family Matters. And um, Not Like Us versus The Heart Part 6 is a complete wash in my opinion. Like The Heart Part 6 was not very well done, not very well calculated. Um, there was good some good lines in there, but overall it just did not hit the way it should have. And Not Like Us is currently the biggest song in the world and rising. Um, and is probably going to end up being the biggest hit of Kendrick's career. Um, and I guess real quick, I can talk about Not Like Us. That song is incredible, man. The DJ Mustard beat is amazing. It, you know, the whole first verse has all the meme stuff that you're looking for. Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. The wop, 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 dot, fuck them up. The fucking um, trying to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor. Like, all, all the... All the meme stuff in the first verse. That's just that was super clever. And and the the John Stockton line. I'm how many ops you got? There's too many options. I'm gonna pass on this body like I'm John Stockton, calling him Carl Malone without even having to say Carl Malone. Um. So that first verse, um, really clever. Really, even though the accusations are still very serious, very lighthearted and fun in comparison to what had happened the night previously, which is much appreciated. And then that second verse, bro. That man reached a level flow-wise and delivery-wise that is just elite, like elite tier flow and delivery on that second verse from Kendrick. Man, like that second verse blows me away when I hear it. I'm like, this is, this is, this is elite level. This is an elite level rap performance. And then in the third verse to break down the history of Atlanta there and tie it back to 2024 and how Drake is doing the same thing with modern day Atlanta artists. Um, it's just really, really clever. Um, really, really unique. I mean, to come out on a club banger and, and take an approach like that for the third verse was, I don't, I've never seen, I've never seen something like that before. Yeah. Not like us is a song that we've, we've never seen before, bro. It's going to go down as one of the most historic disses in the history of hip hop, just cause we've never seen a song like that before. Um, and man, is that shit hard as fuck, bro. Like, it's bumping everywhere. I, I, I hear people drive by my windows bumping it. And I don't even live in Cali, bro. I, I live in Reno, Nevada. And, and it's getting bumped like crazy here. I saw videos of people bumping it in the clubs in New York. I saw that it was number one on the Apple Music charts in Toronto. Yeah, man. I think Not Like Us was the knockout blow. I think the heart part six was Drake coming in and like... It, to me, it sounded like he was where, well aware that he lost the battle, but he's going to still go down swinging and still go down standing on the, I'm going to call them lies because that's what I believe. I believe they're lies. And standing on the lies that he um, that he said in the previous disses. But it, it, it sounded to me like even Drake knew he was defeated at that point. I don't know how much more there is to say. This was a little bit of a discombobulated and all over the place podcast for the simple fact that I just, there was so much that happened from the last video that I had covering any of this that like, how am I even supposed to fit all of it into, into this video? But yeah, man, that's, that's where I stand. I believe that Kendrick, you know, won this overwhelmingly. Um, you know, I'm biased because 
Kendrick was Kendrick's always been a massive inspiration for me since I was in middle school. So, you know, I've always been a big fan of Kendrick's music um, and never was all that interested in Drake's music. Um, nor did I relate very much to the way he seemed to be moving as a person, whereas the way Kendrick moved as a person, I related very heavily to. So, again, like I'm very biased in this conversation, but it is my true and honest opinion when I say that Drake got completely bodied. And it is my true and honest opinion when I say that I believe that Kendrick, at least for most of this, is telling the truth. And I believe that Drake is not. Do I know either of these guys personally? Have I ever spoken to either of them in my life? No. But just based off of what I gather from an outside perspective, uh, I, I, I don't I don't believe much of, if anything, of what Drake is is saying. I think Kendrick won the greatest rap beef that we've ever seen. I think this is the most historic rap beef we've ever seen. Like, Biggie and Pac is obviously historic. Nas and Jay is obviously historic. Ice Cube, NWA, historic. Like, but none of those, I think, even come close to this. Like, as far as, like, a, like the scale of this beef and how how impactful it was like culturally and just how many songs came from it. I mean, most rap beefs don't get past anywhere from two to four songs. We got like eight, eight, nine, ten songs out of this. So like I, I, to me, to me, and I, it may be early to say it, but to me, this is the most historic rap beef we've ever seen. And Kendrick came out on top, certified boogeyman. I've really just been trying to, kind of live in this um and enjoy it because it's an extremely historic moment in music that we're getting to see in real time is it far exceeded expectations and our expectations for this battle was through the roof so for it to exceed them um is is extremely impressive on both parts on on kendrick and drake's part um and i i salute both of them for even for even taking on this this battle real quick i do want to talk about the shooting that happened at drake's house now people in kendrick's camp are saying like that has nothing to do with kendrick um most of the people i'm seeing talk about it are saying it has nothing to do with kendrick i'm seeing most people say that it was a exo retaliation because i guess you know the weekend's security guards were shot about a week ago and so people think that you know this is retaliation for that they think it's re toronto beef and has nothing to do with Kendrick and I don't think it has anything to do with Kendrick you know I don't think Kendrick would send somebody to drive by Drake's house now could I see some stupid fucking fans doing that shit sure um but I mean we have no evidence that it was anything even like that what I'm seeing mostly is that it was exo re retaliation um I don't know if that's fact or if that's just something that people were saying on the internet um we'll have to wait and see like what happens with all that but according to people like academics and I think I think Maul even said this. It's not over. Like apparently Drake is gonna try to come back with more. Um, and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say like not that my advice or opinion matters whatsoever to to Mr. Drizzy Drake, but I would leave that man alone, bro. Like I would leave Kendrick alone. I I don't think I don't think you can out rap him. I don't think you have any dirt on him. I don't think that the public is gonna side with you. And, and, and truth be told, I don't think you dislike him as much as he dislikes you. I think Kendrick dislikes Drake's character more so than Drake dislikes Kendrick's character. I just would leave him alone. I would leave Kendrick alone. I would take the L. I would get up out of here. I would go back to making my pop hits and hope that all of this pedophile stuff, you know, blows over. Um, but one thing's for damn sure, I would not keep rapping at Kendrick. But that being said... Me personally, I kind of hope he does just for the fact that I want more Kendrick raps, bro. Like, I mean, Euphoria, like Kendrick has been rapping his ass off during this whole beat. And I, I'm just glad I'm just glad to be here to listen to it. So, I, you know, anything that's going to give us more Kendrick music, I'm here for it. So if he wants to if he wants to be overly prideful and, and not take the L and keep trying to somehow climb out of this, by all means, go for it. If it means we get more Kendrick raps, you know, on a human level, I would leave that man alone, bro. I would leave him alone. Especially considering he's saying he, he's got more in the rabbit hole. Um, and that that rabbit hole goes deep. I also hope that everything gets exposed. Like I said, there's a lot that goes on 
in the industry that the general public, I think, is not privy to. I think there are certainly a good number of people who are aware of it, um, but the general public is not privy to it. And, you know, I'm all here for evil getting exposed, man. So if, if Drake takes it deeper and Kendrick exposes more about the industry, I hope Kendrick does it in a way where he keeps himself safe. But um, if more gets exposed, I'm here for that as well. Um, like Cat Williams said, this 2024 is the year of truth. This is, it's the year where all the truth comes out, all the lies get exposed, and it's God's side, and it's the other side. And if anybody feels some type of way about the lies getting exposed and the truth coming out, know why they feel that way. You know, I hope I hope Cat's prophecy comes to light, and I hope 2024 really is the year that the general public learns of these things that. Uh, many people are already aware of, but that's 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 all I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Kendrick, to me, won this battle pretty significantly. Um, in my in my humble yet biased opinion, Drake, I would leave him alone. But I hope you don't leave him alone, low key, low key. But I would if I was you. Um, and that's where I'm gonna end it, man. I guess we can do some plugs. Um. I go go listen to my two projects that I put out last year. Um, I have a new single out now called More Rings Than Fingers. You can find that anywhere that you listen to music. Um, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of editing on this video. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. And yeah, hopefully I can get back on track with the pod. I keep saying that, man. But, you know, life is busy. Other things kind of take priority and, you know, I edit these videos entirely myself, um, which takes time. So, but I, d I do hope to get, to get mostly back on track with the pod. Uh, with that being said, my name is Kenny Moss. Um, God bless hip hop and I'm out. Peace.